So, The Amazing Atheist has done a video, Supreme Stupidity Kills First Amendment 1787 to 2014, rip. Um, just so you know, sir, the First Amendment didn't exist in 1787, it didn't come about until 1791, just to help you out. Anyway, I'm starting you about 30 seconds into your video because the first part of it was too stupid for me to play. Alright, take it away. Matthew 6.5, English Standard Bible. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. First Amendment to the Constitution of a little country called the United States. Again, it came about in 1791, not 1787. And uh, the stupid part he had in the beginning was he was quoting from the Bible um, because he apparently can't distinguish a legal decision from a religious um, tenet of faith. Anyway, we'll get into that a little bit later. Of America. Recently, the Supreme Court wiped its ass with Matthew 6, 5, and it rubbed its fucking dick hole or pussy hole or whatever hole it had. His complaint here is essentially that the Supreme Court did not uh, say that it's bad to have legislative prayers and uh, in turn did not affirm part of the Bible that the amazing atheist thinks would be here controlling, not realizing that what's controlling is legal precedents, uh, legal principles, not biblical ones. And uh, so he's whining about that. ...in the front with the Bible because it voted five to four to allow uh, local towns and cities to hold prayer vigils before starting uh, city council meetings and other public meetings. Yeah, so essentially what the Supreme Court did is said, um, hey, that thing that's been happening in the country since the first day of the country, um, we don't think that it violates the Constitution. When the Constitution was written, everyone knew that this was happening. Uh, everyone was okay with this happening. The states had mandated religions that were uh, officially mandated religions. Some of them had were uh, um, going to the church or participating in religious worship was mandatory. No one thought that that violated the Constitution. Uh, this existed before the Constitution. This existed when they were the colonies. It existed when the states it existed, dur existed during the war, the Continental Congress, the uh, United States Congress, and it's existed all the way up until today. And you know what? Not until recently has anyone had a problem with it. So we're going to go with the idea that that thing that everyone thought was constitutional for hundreds of years is actually constitutional, particularly given that there's no part of the Constitution that actually says you can't do it. All it says is Congress shall make no law respecting establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Allowing private citizens to pray before, uh, in the instant case in the town of Greece, it was half an hour before the legislative session started, allowing them to do that is not an endorsement or an establishment of religion in particular. We'll explain why later. These are government meetings that are officially going to be open by prayer, by Christian prayer. Usually, yes, not exclusively. Uh, they have, they've had Wiccans open it, they've had a Baha'i minister open it, they've said they'll let atheists open it with an invocation, whatever that would look like. So, it's actually not true to say that it's just the Christian prayers. It happens to be the case that the majority of them turn out to be Christians who do it. Why? The majority of the country is Christian. If you select people, you're likely to grab a Christian rather than any other, any other religious affiliation or non-religious affiliation. So, they, they've uh, Jews, Muslims, uh, they even mentioned Satanists, Wiccans, Pagans, Baha'i ministers, all kinds of religions you've never heard of, uh, polytheistic religions, atheists, they're all equally free to say, hey, we would like to do it this month, because it's a, they meet once a month. So they have this 12 times a year, and on average, about one time per year, it's a non-Christian who does the invocation, or the benediction, or the whatever you want to call it, which is done about a half an hour before the legislative, the legislative session actually starts. This all goes back to the town of Greece, New York, which from 1997 to 2007 opened each meeting with a prayer led by a chaplain. This was challenged in court and eventually landed in the lap of the Supreme Court. All of the Supreme Court justices who voted for this ruling are Catholic. How do you like that shit? Five of the most powerful people on the most powerful court in the world, all the same religion. We. And uh, one of the things they said is that prayer should be allowed because it brings towns together. Where does it bring them together exactly? In hell? Because that's what you'd think if you...
you read Matthew 6, 1, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So have fun roasting in hell, you God-disobeying motherfuckers. Oh yeah, you're going to be right there with me. Here's what Justice Anthony Kennedy had to say. By inviting ministers to serve as chaplain for the month, the town is acknowledging the central place that religion and religious institutions hold in the lives of those present. If some citizens hear prayers and that makes them feel excluded or disrespected, they should ignore them. Adults often encounter speech they find disagreeable. Yes, and that same rule would hold if it's a Wiccan doing the invocation and a bunch of Christians are like, Oh my God, a witch! Witch, brother! Be like, whoa, wait. If if the policy is we can have these and, and the, the government's not in the business of deciding who's good enough to say a prayer, you guys have to shut the fuck up and let this person talk too. If it's an atheist who stands up there and does, I don't know what that would look like, but they do the invocation and someone's like, hey, a dick! You'd be like, yeah, yeah, shut up though. Uh, you just have to learn to tolerate that not everyone has your own religious views to include not even believing in any religion. And they all have a right to go into public and to speak. So, the, the, same, the same thing you're whining about here that's in this case being used to protect Christians' ability to do it also protects everyone else's. The Wiccan, when she did it, there was no big problem. When the Baha'i minister was there, there was no problem. If an atheist did it, there wouldn't be any real big problem. The government, in the town of Greece anyway, is not interested in figuring out who's good enough to give the, uh, the whatever you want to call it, the benediction, vacation, whatever it is. It is. Uh, the, in, they've even gone on their website and they've advertised, look, if you're not from the area, but you're visiting the area and you happen to have a religion that's not mainstream, do drop in. Uh, let us know you would like to do the invocation and ta-da! Absolutely. I mean, I'm sorry, is this where I'm supposed to put on my atheist cloak and and start whining and crying about the oppression of the town of Greece, letting Wiccans and Pagans and Baha'is and Atheists stand up in front of people and talk? Oh wait, no. It's the Christians! They're oppressing me somehow not really because the amazing Atheist doesn't understand the law or the history of this country. That is true. Uh, if you live in a free country, you will encounter speech that you find disagreeable. There's tons of people out there that I disagree with, and I happen to be someone who makes my disagreements known. And there's plenty of people out there who disagree with me. And that's good. That shows that there's still a lively debate happening. That shows that people still feel free to voice their opinions. That's a wonderful thing. And the fact that this lawsuit was in a court indicates that people are still free to go to the courts to litigate their issues with the understanding that not everyone who wants a particular thing is going to win every single time. It may not always seem like it, but it is. But you know what? This is not that. Because these are official government meetings where policy is being set. This is the government of the United States. Notably, um... The Supreme Court, an official meeting of the government, opens it by saying, God bless uh, the United States in this honorable court. And as was pointed out to the council, uh, both council, I think, had this pointed out to them, but in particular the one who was whining, uh, you didn't feel put off by the, the marshal standing up and saying, God bless the United States in, in this honorable court, did you? No, Your Honor. Well, why not? Well, yes. Sh shut up. Stop whining. People are perfectly capable of understanding that in a, in a society where you're, not everyone thinks the same, other people are going to have opinions that differ from yours, and some of those people are going to be religious, and that's going to have religious tones. There's a stark distinction between allowing private citizens to uh, have the floor for a second, to do one of their little silly rituals, like raising the flag, or uh, pick any other silly ritual that you'd like to do that neither breaks your back nor picks your pocket, but you have to whine and complain about, letting them get on with that for a couple of seconds, and then, getting, uh, then going into the business thing, and just being a complete raging dick about it and say, no, 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 because I don't believe that religion. You aren't allowed to talk about it in public, in this public building. Now, some people will bring up the distinction, oh, well, you can't do it to children. Children and adults are different. The teachers stand in a different relationship to students than adults stand in relation to one another. Teachers can say, paddle their students. Students are disciplined and punished for refusing to obey the commands 
of their teachers. Uh, if I walk into my kid's school and I have a complaint, they can't go paddle me. Or if they do, one of us is going to go to the hospital, and I've seen those people, it won't be me. Just saying. And in this case, it's saying, here's an open forum. Anyone of any religion, any clergy, I suppose, or grand poobah, is free to come up and have a couple seconds to say their silly little, do their, I don't want to put it this way, but have their silly little ritual and say their silly little thing. And then next time, someone else can do it. And about one out of 12 events, someone who's not Christian shows up and says, I want to do it. And they go, fine, floor's yours. Knock yourself out. And then maybe they sit there quietly, la, 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 la. I don't know. But whatever it is, it's open for everyone of every religion or no religion. And this, you complain, is Christian domination. States, which should be a secular government that takes no sides in debates about theology, that takes no sides. It's not taking a side on theology. That's why your, your, your opening point was stupid. They're not saying whether it's a good practice. The Supreme Court's not saying whether it's a good practice or a bad practice or it's biblical or non-biblical or chronic or non-chronic. It's a matter of law. It is the tra tradition of this country that people can do this. It's happened every Ever, ever since the founding of this country, the framing of this, excuse me, the framing of the Constitution. When the Constitution was ratified, as I read in the previous video, Article 3 of the Massachusetts State Constitution was explicit. The, the state was required to force citizens to attend church. No one thought that violated the Constitution. Now, some people are going to say, well, the 14th Amendment had the effect of applying to the states the whole of the Bill of Rights. I saw quite a few people on, on the Amazing Atheist's channel saying this. That is false. The Third Amendment doesn't apply to the states. The Seventh Amendment doesn't apply to the states. They just don't. Um, you don't need to have a unanimous verdict. Uh, the Constitution doesn't require that in the states. Nevertheless, a, a lot of the provisions of the Bill of Rights have, by way of the incorporation doctrine, been applied to the states. Now, nothing in the Fourteenth Amendment itself actually says that this is so. It, some people interpret it to mean that, but it doesn't actually say it. It says, uh, for instance, that um, the, state, the states may not deprive anyone of uh, life, liberty, or property without due process of law. If the 14th Amendment were to, uh, was meant to apply the Bill of Rights to the states, then it's completely mysterious why in the 14th Amendment and in the 5th Amendment it says life, liberty, and property without due process of law. You can't be deprived of that property. There would be no need to say states. Listen up carefully. Um, you can't do it either if... The 14th Amendment said states. The 5th Amendment applies to you because then they wouldn't be able to do it anyway. So you have a superfluous uh, phrase in the Constitution, a superfluous clause in the Constitution, and it's a, it is a canon of legal interpretation that no word in a statute or constitutional provision or legal text is super, uh, superfluous. There's no surplusage. Every word is there on purpose. It has a meaning and it must be given effect. But here you have a duplicate statement. You would not have a dupl duplicate statement if it's true that the 14th Amendment actually was meant to incorporate the whole of the Bill of Rights to the states. Now, of course, it does uh, quite explicitly, despite notwithstanding the fact the Slaughterhouse cases say, say otherwise, it does say the privileges that no state may deny any person, any citizen of the United States, uh, their they may not de deny them their privileges and immunities. And those aren't clearly defined, but that is not thought by anyone to, to include the whole of the Bill of Rights. When it comes to race or sex or anything else like that, any superficial determining fact. Are you say, okay? Since you're putting those on a par, if I take your meaning correctly, you would have to argue that it's equally unlawful for the government to say, uh, "This week we would like someone from, oh, I don't know, the NAACP to come up and open the uh, legislative session with a short poem or something." Notwithstanding the fact that next week they'll do, they'll have someone, you know, some white person, I don't know, maybe a Klan's member, whatever, a Black Panther, uh, some Jewish organization, some, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, Arabic organization, some Mexican organization, whatever. Because that's race, and well, you have to be blind to it, you have to pretend that there aren't any actually black people, there aren't any actually white people. No. The fact that you tolerate some, the fact that there are people who are different in this country means you have to tolerate the fact that they exist here and they have a right to show up before their government and petition it too. And so long as the, the rule the government uh, lays down is equally applied, no one's discriminated against, anyone's free to take part in it, to include the getting up and representing the thing, no problem. You would have a, a momentous complaint if what they said is, uh, we will take any Catholics who want to do this, but no Protestants. But they didn't say that. They didn't, re they didn't restrict it to Christianity. Anyone of any faith is invited. <laughs> and when you allow 
uh, official town meetings to be preceded by prayers to the Christian God. It's interesting that he keeps saying preceded. Yeah, by half an hour. It's not actually part of the legislative session. No government official actually does this. It is a private citizen who does it. That sends the message that we're not a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. No, pretending that no one is religious, and therefore all mentions of God of any type must be prohibited by law in every, every public building, is saying uh, that that's where you're dis disenfranchising people. Most of the people in this country, whether you like it or not, are religious. It's their country, too. And the one thing about democracy is, whether you like it or not, the majority rules. If you don't believe that, then you don't believe in democracy. Now, it happens to be the case in the United States that the supermajority, a larger, uh, a, a larger majority said, there are some things on which the majority does not determine it. And they are very carefully listed. And it's just those things. They say these are not proper topics for democratic discussion at the normal legislative level. First, second, third, you know, well, not third, but anyway. Those amendments are largely about that. And, by the way, this, the Bill of Rights is largely about codifying things that, uh, the protection against things that tyrants historically want to take away from people. Just to throw that in there. So, no, it, and it does me, it does me no injustice when I was in the military to stand there uh, at attention, or with, not with my, I would never bow my head, because I was an atheist, but I wouldn't disrupt other people. When they took their 30 seconds uh, to say uh, some silly little prayer that the chaplain had. The thing about the military is you have, well, I don't know, you have a battalion or a brigade of people, hundreds to thousands to division, tens of thousands of people, say. And what you have to do is you have to build a community there that's under the control of the commanders and encompasses every aspect of people's lives so that way when you move them to a war zone, they have everything that they require, a part of which is very important to people and has been historically and it probably always will be, unfortunately, is religion. That's why the chaplains are there. And I'm not going to tell someone, I'm sorry, I know that you're near death and, and having this guy walk over to you and make some funny little motions over your head and wipe some water on you would really help your last few minutes of suffering uh, be slightly less. I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to snatch that away from you. Hell, if I thought it would help, I would lie. I would pretend to be a priest to help that guy out. Yeah, I'm, you're the damn skippy. I will tell a bald-faced lie if I thought that it would ease a person's pain in their moment of death. No problems with that at all. And I'm certainly not going to get upset because we pay some chaplains to fall, walk around on the battlefield to attend the, the things that these people think are important to them. And for those, it's a, it's a democracy. Oh, some people will say, it's not a democracy, it's a republic. We're a federated, democratic republic. It is republican in structure, democratic in its function, and federation in the division, federated in its division of powers. Don't like it? Fuck off. Or, vote to change the way the government's structured. You know, call a constitutional convention. It shows that we're a government of some people, by some people, for some people. I'm the Amazing Atheist, and in my opinion, this is among the worst Supreme Court decisions. Gosh. That's, that's amazing to hear. That's Maybe that's why they call you the Amazing Atheist. Like, you wake up one day and, oh my god, people can pray in legislative sessions? I had no idea! It's amazing you're this fucking ignorant. It's been going on for hundreds of years, without a problem. Have a great day.